What's up, everybody? Today is Christmas, and I just wanted to show you guys what I got. I got this really cool quad lock set. Um, I got the phone case. I got two of the scooter slash motorcycle mirror mounts. I can use those on the BMW on the handlebar because it has a cross brace that is the same diameter as a mirror, and I'm going to use one on the mirror of the trail and see if I like that. I also got the vibration dampener for the trail because it gets pretty buzzy as the RPMs get higher. And for the phone, so that I can use the case um, across the board when I'm not riding the motorcycle, I got a phone ring stand for the back of it that should pop out pretty easily, but it'll let me hold it a little bit better. And so I am excited to get all of this together. And so I'm gonna get these mounted to the motorcycle today. And then I'm gonna pop my phone in the case here and see how I like that. So give me just a second here while we do that. All right, so first things first, let's get this iPhone case opened up here. Has a nice pull tab. Pop this case out. We have our case, some warranty information here. Overall, the case looks really nice. It's really nice quality. It's soft, but it has a texture to it, so it's not gonna get slippery. Has nice padding on the inside to protect your phone. And this doesn't bulge too much off the back. It's really actually quite slim. Good volume buttons, control buttons on it, and it leaves obviously the charging port open and the, uh, the microphone. Let's pop the phone in here and see how it looks. It's a pretty tight squeeze, more so than other cases I've used. Looks good. Feels good. It's very slim. I like it. I don't have a screen protector on right now, but I will add one, obviously, if I'm using this on the motorcycle. But that's not too bad. I did not get the dust cover that they make. I might get that in the future but I really don't think it's gonna be an issue. Next is the phone ring stand for the back. Oops, worked that pretty good. 100% compatible with all quad lock cases. So if I get a different phone in the future, in a different case, I can still use this. And it comes with a mini carabiner for your key ring, which is pretty cool. So this will just pop out like that. Let's put this on the back. And it fits into that same interface, obviously. So it'll just turn into place, I assume. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. Makes this grip on the back a bit more even, a bit more smooth. Gives you a nice place to hold on. If you're taking pictures or walking over rough terrain maybe with the motorcycle, trying to get a good picture. Or if you want to set your phone up and watch something when you're camping or when you're at home. It doesn't swing open at all. I think that's going to be a nice Nice little addition, and it pops off easy too. You just have to turn it, and it'll come right out. Put it back in, turn it, and it's on. Very cool. Very intuitive, very easy to use. Very clean design. I like this a lot. All right, everybody, I am out in the garage and I have my scooter slash motorcycle mirror mount and my vibration dampener accessory for the quad lock. I'm gonna get them installed. I actually just installed these on my BMW, uh, not a vibration dampener, but the scooter motorcycle mount. And it came out really nice and it's super easy. So I thought I would just show you guys how to do this in line with the rest of the review of this. So they give this nice little pull tab, but I am struggling and I ripped it. But now it is open. So you can see inside here, 
it's all jammed together into one big piece right and right here we have we're going to slide this off here real carefully so that we don't drop anything or everything all at once we have the quad lock itself and then we have three different spacers to fit around the mirror so I actually already know which one is going to fit the trail. It's going to be this guy right here. So we'll slide the other two out of the way for now. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to pop this onto the mirror itself. I think I'm actually going to do it on the other side, on the starter side. So this is going to fit around the mirror itself. And then this clamp is going to go around it. And then we have a little three millimeter Allen key right in here. Um, and basically to get to that, we're going to remove this faceplate. So first things first, find the size that is right for you. I'm going to readjust the camera here and I'll show you how this pops on. So what we want to do is we want to take the correct spacer, right? And we want to pop it. Literally, it has the cut in it. So it's literally just going to pop on around the mirror. You can see mine's a little loose, but if we apply a little pressure, it stays in place. Right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to take the supplied three millimeter wrench, which looks like this guy right here, just a little Allen key, right? And we're gonna remove this face plate. Right, and then it's gonna come right off and you can see that it has all these ridges this is what it looks like underneath. Be sure to not drop your screw. Might be hard to find if you drop it. So I'm gonna put this out of the way for now, but I'm gonna take this right here, our actual clamp. I'm gonna undo the bolt on it. I'm not gonna remove the bolt. I'm just gonna get it open so that it can fit around. So it fits right around there. Now I'm just going to tighten it down. And I'm not going to go crazy this first time around. I'm going to get it snug. But I'm going to come back and do all this again. Because what I want to do is figure out the correct position for my quad lock. I think that that is going to be right for mine. Mm, that's not bad either. That's pretty much at the side though, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. Alright, so now I have it tight. Okay, now what I want to do is make sure that my phone is just going to snap on there correctly. So I'm still getting used to where I have to hold the phone while pushing it on. And that's it. I think that position is really good. Slide this away so maybe you can see. I think that's pretty good. And then if I want, I can have it like that. It's out of the way of my hand out of the way of my mirror. I like that. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to release the phone. I'm going to undo this mount or remove the faceplate. I'm going to tighten the clamp down. I want to make sure I have it nice and snug. And then because the trail is a 125cc single cylinder and it gets pretty buzzy, I want to use my vibration dampener on this setup. So what I'm going to do here is get this box opened. Now let's get our vibration dampener out. And you can see that this is the same setup, has the same three millimeter Allen key. And then on the back here, it has all the ridges. And then our screw is actually set within there. 
So I'm just going to mount this on. Again, real simple. Just get it to the correct place for yourself. Get your wrench down in there. And then you can tighten yours down. Cool. So mine is tight. You can see that's the, the wiggle that the vibration dampener, these little rubber elastomers give it so that it doesn't mess up your phone camera if you're on a bumpy road or your motorcycle's getting buzzy, which mine does both. I'm always on bumpy roads and it gets quite buzzy. So now we will just take our quad lock, get that position correct again. I like it right there. Now I'm just gonna tighten this guy down into the actual vibration dampener accessory. And I'm just gonna tighten that down. Not gonna go crazy because I don't want to strip that bolt or anything. It's just a three mil, so it doesn't really have that high of a torque. And that is it. Take my phone again. Make sure that everything is correct. And that's it. I think it looks good. That play is interesting. I don't know if it's supposed to have that much or if I just knocked it loose somehow. Hmm. Well, let me show you what it looks like on the BMW and how I did it there because I used the same scooter motorcycle mirror mount, but it mounted actually to my handlebars. So let's take a look at that real quick. All right, here's our setup on the BMW. So you can see that the BMW has this weird crossbar across the handlebars right here. Um, this is actually the same diameter. I took some uh, digital calipers and measured, but it's actually the same as the mirror on the trail. Um, so I thought this was a really good way to save a little bit of money and have a really clean uh, mounting system here. And uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but it is centered with the middle of the bike um, or the middle of the dash, I should say. And you can see that with my phone, just take it, snap it into place, and it looks good. It doesn't contact anything. Position is good. Everything looks good with it. So I'm really honestly happy with how that is sitting on there. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I can't wait to use this. I can't wait to use some of my uh, other mapping software this summer. Probably I'm going to use Ride with GPS for making courses and doing uh, trip write-ups and everything like that. They have a really good setup, so I'm sure that there will be a video about that to come, but for now, I just wanted to show you what this looks like and show you how easy it was to actually install that on the motorcycles. It took me like five minutes per motorcycle, if that. So really happy with it. Seems really super secure. Not going to go anywhere, I hope. I don't think it will. So I'm a little bit concerned about the play uh, with the vibration dampener. This is the play. I don't know if you can see this very well. Let's kind of turn this at an angle. Look at this play. This is crazy. Uh, I did take everything off to make sure that this is tight. And the weight of this lets it wiggle like this. That is, in my opinion, unacceptable. This is an iPhone SE 2020. Uh, so it really doesn't weigh that much. It's not a big phone. It's your traditional iPhone size. That is the wiggle, side to side and up and down. I I'm really surprised at how bad that actually is. And what's weird is when you take it off, I mean, it really, like, it doesn't look like that much. But really, that is a lot of play. I really don't understand what's going on there. I'm gonna have to reach out to Quadlock and see if there's something wrong with the vibration dampener that I got, or if that is the typical amount of play, because if that is the typical amount of play, that's absurd. So I'll definitely follow up on that issue. Okay, so I wanted to follow up on this, and this is kind of the reason this video didn't get posted sooner, but basically after filming that last segment, uh, about how this is just a significant amount of play. I reached out to Quadlock via their chat on their website. 
their online chat service and I got somebody in their support room um, and that person took my complaint or heard my issue I should say and um, basically asked to see a video I sent them a video and uh, they agreed that that didn't seem totally normal so they reached out to their service team and uh, about a day went by before I heard from them but they sent me a replacement so they agreed that that didn't really seem normal and that another one might be warranted in this situation so I'm gonna toss it on real quick and see if that changes anything now in the meantime I did ride with this and it was fine my phone didn't really move when I hit bumps it wasn't like rattling around or anything that might be the play that it has but I'm gonna toss the other one on and we're gonna take a look real quick all right that's the replacement and you can see the play is identical it didn't change so while I thought that that was unacceptable I was wrong that is standard play like I said I've ridden with my phone on the other one and when you're moving at least on pavement hitting bumps and stuff like that your phone's not like flopping around you actually barely notice it um, and you can read the screen and everything it's not like it's shaking the whole time or anything like that so honestly I'm pretty impressed especially with Quadlock's customer service I have no affiliation to the brand other than that I got this as a Christmas present and that I wanted it for a while so shout out to them for good customer support and for sending a replacement piece at all because some brands won't even do that but I'm gonna take this out to Bent Creek we're gonna ride this on a bumpy dirt road and we're gonna see how it does all right one second while I get the bike ready and get my phone on there and we'll get rolling all right we are in Bent Creek now we can test this thing off-road I have Google Maps pulled up just so you can see the phone see it moving see what it looks like where I mounted it I have it mounted off of the mirror because I'm a bit taller and looking down all the time would be a big pain in the butt um, the cons of mounting it there are I assume that if I ever crashed uh, that would be in a really good spot to take an impact so you know you figure out where you want to mount things but that's where I put it and uh, I'm willing to deal with the consequences of putting it there so I guess I'm gonna purposely steer towards some bumps um, really just anything to make this thing wiggle so anytime I see a little pothole I'm gonna steer towards it I'm not gonna slam it like full speed because uh, that's gonna hurt <laughs> But I do definitely want to test this guy out. You can see it right now. I mean, it's barely moving. And if you're watching this wondering why I'm so focused on this vibration dampener, both of my motorcycles are single cylinder. Uh, my trail is a single cylinder 125, and my BMW is a single cylinder uh, 650. So um, they definitely get buzzy at higher speeds. Um, at high RPMs, they are, I, I'm not going to lie, I mean, this, this thing can, you know, vibrate your feet numb um, if you're, you're pinned out for a long time. So definitely would put the phone and uh, any of the camera stuff, especially if I got a nicer phone, in danger. Um, I'd rather have it and be uh, precautious than not have it at all. So that's the whole point of getting this quad lock system. Um, especially the vibration dampener. Across the board, I want to be able to use my uh, mapping apps like Ride with GPS and Strava and whatever else, maybe Gaia. Um, I want to be able to use those as well offline uh, when I'm out in the woods this summer. I had some difficulties with the Garmin last year and uh, this is just a good insurance policy. Alright, this section up here gets pretty chunky, so this is going to be a good spot to test it out. Just kind of keep an eye on it here. You can see, I mean, it really isn't like flapping around or anything. 
It's quite stationary. If the screen was on, I'd be able to read it just fine, or see the direction arrow, and follow it accordingly. This is pretty washed out, and I'm not having any problems with it. So really, you can see that it's high quality. And I'm really excited to use it this year. I think it's going to be really great to have my phone mounted up there. To be able to see maps easier. But we'll see. Only time will tell. This is just my initial impression. Make sure that you stay tuned for a long-term review in the next three to six months. And I'll give you more insight into what I like and don't like about it. But I'm going to keep on riding since it's a beautiful day. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you have any questions about the quad lock or the installation of it, drop me a comment below and I'll try and get back to you as fast as I can. And until next time, peace out everybody.